welcome to the course ergonomics in automotive design now we are going to discuss our third module that is occupant packaging in this module we will discuss about three major topics first one definition and importance of vehicle packaging second key vehicle dimensions and reference points associated with the occupant packaging and the third topic sequence and development procedure in vehicle packaging so first we should know what is occupant packaging the term packaging was introduced in automotive industry to indicate the process of assembling vehicle components those are subsystem or system within the allocated or planned 3d space or volume of the vehicle to ensure functionality and usability of the vehicle the occupant packaging is defined as the two dimensional or three dimensional representation generally sketches or cad rendered models of the occupant these occupants may be drivers passengers mostly in the forms of mannequin in relation to the vehicle components and layout so in brief what we can mention as occupant packaging the occupant packaging is the process of representation in two dimensional or in three dimensional form to indicate how the various occupants either driver or passengers or maintenance operator will be accommodated within the vehicle so that they can perform their activity with ease and with comfort so definition and importance of occupant packaging so there are various automotive standard those standards actually guiding how to do that automotive packaging process so ase standards which are relevant to occupant packaging and ergonomic evaluations are listed below apart from those ase standards the corresponding international standards iso standards british standards are also given in parenthesis now if you look at so there are various standards saej 826 is for h point similarly that is also mentioned in iso 6549 then saej 1100 seating reference points then saej 1100 h point travel path SAJ one five one seven that is for driver selected seat position. SAJ nine one four for eye lifts. Similar standard is also mentioned in ISO that is four five one three British standards related to automotive design one seventy six. Then SAJ one zero five two related to driver and passengers head position contours. Then SAJ two eight seven that is related to hand controls. reach and valves similarly in iso also similar standards is 4040 and a british standard 199 apart from this various standards for occupant packaging there are also other design guidelines which are relevant for automotive design this type of guidelines are available in various literature resources few are mentioned here like sanders and mccormick 1992 this is related to displays controls workstation layout similarly peacock and karoski 1993 they given some guideline related to occupant packaging display and controls the aging of driver there are other guidelines or standards related to this is a different standard then there are also standards available for anthropometry display controls design guidelines for in vehicle information system so apart from ac standards british standards and many other similar automotive standards there are also various design guidelines which we can consult for automotive packaging and vehicle design now if we look at a passenger car so there are various compartment we can divide in this four compartments the first portion front impact structure and power train the second portion where driver is sitting on the driver seat that is related to driver package next the back side there that is rear occupant package and the last portion that is rear impact structure and cargo space out of these four areas our area of interest for this occupant packaging mainly driver package and rear occupant package this middle two portions now the various aspects which we generally discuss under occupant packaging are listed here so one is relative position of the occupant with vehicle components how occupant mean driver or passenger or maintenance persons are positioned inside the vehicle and how they interact with the vehicle that is defined with 
various aspects and those are mentioned here like key reference points like accelerator hill point, pedal reference point, seating reference point, we will discuss in details in subsequent uh, slides. Next mannequins SEJ 826, then J 4002, H point machine, H point devices. So, these are other aspect. Then occupant packaging tools, these are mentioned in various SEJ standards, primary vehicle controls like steering wheel, pedals, gear shifter, how should be their location so that the driver can easily use those controls. Then some vehicle body and trim components like seats, instrument panel, center console, door trim panels, mirror, etc. is also discussed under occupant packaging. Apart from the driver positioning and interaction with other controls, we also discussed about reachability of the operators for various controls like steering wheels, various foot pedals, gear shifter, knob buttons on the instrument panels. So, these are discussed under occupant packaging. Then view field of the occupant, eye leaves, driver's eye location specified in AC standard J941, in vehicle and external visibility by the occupant that may be direct visibility through the windshield or it may be indirect visibility using the mirror and or any other devices. Then clearance dimensions like head clearance, knee clearance, thigh clearance, lateral clearance, different types of clearance dimensions whether those are available in the vehicle so that driver and other occupants like passengers or maintenance person can do their job comfortably that is also discussed under this occupant packaging. Then we study entry exit that how driver or passenger is entering inside the vehicle, coming out of from the vehicle and how they are taking seats inside the vehicle those aspects are discussed under this entry exit. Storage space, different holders, drawers, cabinet for keeping small sized belongings of the occupant. On the other hand, uh, the trunk, boot or dicky for the keeping large size luggage. So, how the storage space should be distributed in that vehicle that is also coming under occupant packaging. Then service and maintenance, keeping provisions for easy and safe maintenance uh, for servicing. For example, refueling, cleaning, replacing faulty parts. So, for that purpose also while we are designing the vehicle or developing the vehicle concept, then these various aspects of the occupant packaging we should needed to cons we should consider in detail. So, that there should not be any problem uh, while the users are using that vehicle. Next, what are the challenges in occupant packaging? The major challenge in occupant packaging is to accommodate the maximum percentage of the targeted user. As we mentioned earlier, these targeted users are drivers, passengers, maintenance or service personnel. In such a manner, we have to do this so that they can easily and comfortably perform all the required tasks. Those tasks may be related or non-related to driving. So, driving or non-related or non-driving task should be performed comfortably and easily. At the same time, we have to take care that maximum percentage of the targeted users or targeted customer should be accommodated within that vehicle. Successful automotive design is achieved by optimum compromise among various factors within the imposed constraints. Typically, these constraints are time, cost and legislation. Such compromises will not be achievable if the basic ergonomic issues affecting accommodation and comfort are not established from the very beginning stage that is the conceptual stage of the vehicle development. Now, while we are discussing about the occupant packaging, various dimensions, key reference points, then first we have to understand that how to define the vehicle in 3D space, various dimensions, various spaces inside the vehicle, how we can define in 3D space. For that purpose, we have to take help of coordinate uh, Cartesian coordinate system. The origin of the coordinate system x, y, g, z that is the 0, triple 0 position is considered forward of the front bumper. Here it you can see at this point this is the area where this is the origin point. So, where all x, y, z all are 0. So, this is located actually in front of the vehicle on the ground. Then the upward direction is z axis that is positive, then sideways from the uh, left side to the right side 
it is positive y axis similarly from the front to the back of the vehicle that is the positive x axis. Thus, what is happening when we are defining the axis in such a way then all the dimensions vertical dimensions from the ground upwards it is coming in positive value. Similarly, all the dimensions in x direction that is coming also in positive value only as this is the midpoint of the vehicle. So, lateral dimensions that may be positive and negative because in that case positive x axis is also there negative x axis are also there. So, in this way the Cartesian coordinate system is followed for defining the vehicle dimensions. Now, we should go for defining various reference points which are used for occupant packaging. The first and foremost important point is accelerator hill point who in brief we mention as AHP. According to SAJ 1100 the standard according to the standard HP is a point located at the intersection of the heel of the shoe and the depressed floor covering when the shoe tool specified in SAJ 826 or J4002 is properly positioned that is essentially with the ball of foot contacting the lateral center line of the undepressed accelerator pedal while the bottom of the shoe is maintained on the pedal plane. As we read this definition then from that then what is accelerator hill point? So, if you look at this image, so accelerator hill point is a point on the vehicle floor where hill is touching. What is the condition? When the foot is on the undepressed rudder pedal, bottom of the shoe is parallel with the pedal plane. At that point where the heel of the shoe is touching the vehicle floor that particular point is referred as accelerator hill point. Next important reference point is a pedal reference point uh, in abbreviated form PRP. So, it is the midpoint on the lateral central line of the undepressed accelerator pedal when the ball of foot contacts the pedal and the shoe tool as specified by SAE J standard is properly positioned that is heel of the shoe at the HP position and bottom of the shoe on the pedal plane. So, if you look at this image then we understand that PRP is this particular point where ball of foot is touching the midline of the accelerator and the heel is touching at the accelerator heel point. So, while the driver is keeping his foot on the pedal plane then the contact point of the ball of foot at the accelerator that is called as the PRP pedal reference point. Now, what is the ball of foot? Ball of foot is this particular area is located about 200 millimeter from the accelerator hill point measured along the pedal plane. From the pedal from the AHP if we go along this pedal plane then at around 200 millimeter distance we will get the ball of foot. So, ball of foot actually the area of the feet through which we actually place the accelerator brake or this type of controls where this metatarsal bone and phalanges bone this junction point is known as the ball of foot. Now, next reference point is the seat reference point. This seat reference point is the intersecting point of the midline of the compressed seat back and the compressed seat pan. So, this in this image uh, photo you can see this is the point which is defined as the seat reference point mean this is the intersecting point of the compressed seat back and the midline of the compressed seat pan because the property of the uh, cushion or the material of the seat is defined. So, that is why the we have to consider the compressed seat back midline of the compressed seat back and the midline of the compressed seat pan. These two line where they are intersecting that particular point is known as SRP. So, SRP for a particular seat is fixed in relation to that seat, but while the seat is moving to accommodate different types of driver while the seat is moving along the seat track then the SRP position also varies in relation to the vehicle, but in relation to the seat its position is fixed. Now, if you look at this image, so while the fifth percentile female driver or female mannequin is positioned on the keeping their leg on the accelerator it is touching the accelerator hill point similarly 95th percentile mannequin male mannequin is also positioned with the same similar driving posture then what is happening as per the requirement they will adjust the seat forward and backward. So, 5th percentile female 
will move the seat uh, forward whereas, the 95th percentile male driver will move the seat backward. As the seat is moving forward and backward, so accordingly the SRP position will also vary. So, in this image this is the SRP position for 5th percentile female mannequin, on the other hand this is the SRP position for 95th percentile male mannequin. So, position of the SRP is varying as per the seat adjustment. Now, next important reference point is the H point that is hip joint point. Now, what is hip joint point? If we look at this skull, then we will understand. So, there are two hip joints. So, one is uh, right hip joint, another is left hip joint. The midpoint of these two hip joints, this position, this position is known as H point. So, how we can define what is the H point? So, H point, if we connect the two hip joints with an imaginary line, the midpoint of that line is known as H point. Now, from this image, if we see from the side view, then it is coming at the side of the hip joint. So, this is the H point. On the other hand, while we are looking at the mannequin from the front view or back view, then it is coming at the middle of the hip joints. Although the, this point is at the center of this imaginary line, but from the side view it appears like it is at the side, but its actual position at the middle of the two hip joints. Now, H point mannequin. For defining H points, SAE J standard 826 specified the H point machine, so that we can easily detect the H point in a particular seat when it is manufactured or when it is installed in a vehicle. SAE J standard J4002 specified H point device that is called HPD. While in SAE J standard 826 is mentioning as H point machine, in SAE J 4000 it is mentioning as H point device. So, this is the updated one. So, H point machine and H point device are actually three dimensional fixture for the representation of lower limb dimension of 95th percentile leg, whereas weight of 50th percentile that is 76 kg for US population and torso contour of 5th percentile of US male. So, this H point machine or H point device actually representing these anthropometric and biomechanical properties. So, if we look at this image, then you can see there are various segments, lumbar segment, pelvic segment, thoracic segment and this is the cushion pan and this is thigh segment and lower leg segment and this is the shoe portion. So, this type of device are positioned on the automobile seat to identify where will be the location of H point, while the uh, shoe of the device is kept on the H point, accelerator heel point location. Later on, there is also modification of that uh, H point machine. So, uh, University of Michigan in their uh, automotive research program, they developed aspect mannequin, automobile seat and packaging evaluation. So, aspect mannequin, so this is the full form is automotive seat packaging evaluation and comparative tool. So, in aspect mannequin, so they modified the H point mannequin or H point machine with an articulated lumbar spine. Similarly, there is also further modification of that H point machine, there is also they added head restraint device for identifying the head location and representing the head position. Now, another reference point used in uh, defining automotive packaging that is called sitting reference point SGRP. Generally, sitting reference point is defined as the H point of the driver of 95th percentile lower limb dimension, while the driver adjusts the seat at the rearmost position of the seat truck travel. The SAJ1517 or J4004 recommends that the SGRP means sitting reference point should be placed at the 95th percentile location of the H point distribution obtained by positioning H point machine. So, in brief what is sitting reference point? So, sitting reference point while the 95th percentile driver is keeping their leg on the accelerator heel point and adjusting the seat as per their requirement at that time whatever will be the position of the H point that is called as the SGRP. H point machine is used to define or verify the location of SGRP on the compressible seat by the seat manufacturer and vehicle manufacturers. 
H points are different for each designated seating position. For driver seat, it is different from the passenger seat. So, based on the type of seat, whether this is a driver seat or co-passenger seat or the passengers of the rear seat, based on that, the H point location will also vary. Now, if we look at this image, then while mannequins of different percentile starting from 2.5th percentile to 2.5th percentile to 97.5 percentile or 5th percentile to 95th percentile, mannequins are being positioned on the occupant seat. Then while the seat adjustment is happening based on this H point machine or H point mannequin, then what is happening? The trajectories of the H points are different as represented here. So, this type of trajectories are there. Out of this trajectory, this is the H point or HGRP. So, how this trajectories are happening? So, while that H point position are almost fixed and while the driver is adjusting the seat height accordingly, the H point movement is happening. So, the path of the H point movement is mentioned as the H point trajectory. So, these are the H point trajectories for different percentile mannequins. Out of this trajectory from the, this one, that if we go for the 95th percentile trajectory, then this particular location is that is the uh, H point SGRP. So, how is this SGRP is defined? It is the function, we are going to the next slide, where we will see how this H point is defined. Now, similar to that one, the SGRP is defined as the point located at x 95 horizontal distance from the wall of foot point and h 30 vertical distance from the accelerator yield point. So, this particular point is designated as the SGRP. So, what is SGRP? So, this is actually a uh, intersection point of the x 95 distance from the pedal reference point to the 95th percentile trajectory and the vertical seat height which is designated as z distance that is h 30. So, in this particular figure shows the distribution of the horizontal location of x of the h points. So, x distance from the pedal reference point or from the accelerator hit point. If we position for different percentile mannequin, then we will get this type of normal distribution curve. Mean while the x distance is presented as the function of z height that is the h 30, then we are getting this type of normal distribution curve. Mean all the drivers with different body dimension or anthropometric variability. So, their H point will be within this area. Mean their H point will follow this type of normal distribution pattern. Out of that normal distribution pattern, if we particularly consider this trajectory that is for 95th percentile mannequin or 90th percentile driver, then this particular location where the x 95 distance intersecting with the z height that is the h 30 that particular point is referred as sitting reference point HGRP. So, trajectory of the 90th percentile h point as a function of h 30 that particular point is called HGRP curve and on that HGRP curve this intersecting point as I mentioned that x 95 distance intersecting with the z height that is the h 30 that particular intersecting point is known as sitting reference point HGRP. Now, if we look at this image, so if 95th percentile or male mannequin or the mannequin with the larger body dimension and this green one that is the 5th percentile female with smaller body dimension are positioned on the driver seat, then we can see where is the H point location. This is the H point location for the 5th percentile female mannequin and this is the H point location of the 95th percentile male mannequin. So, while we are the we are deciding that how much should be the seat track travel limit, then we have to consider so that that seat track travel limit should be sufficient enough so that both 5th percentile female mannequin at the same time 95th percentile male mannequin they can adjust the seat forward and backward as per their requirement. So, in this image relative position of H points of 95th percentile male mannequin and 5th percentile female mannequin on the driver seat has been represented. Now, after discussing about various key reference points like accelerator hill point, seating reference point, pedal reference point, now we are moving to discuss about eye lifts 
or ellipsoidal uh, shape in the three dimensions. So, what is this eye ellipse? If you look at this image, this is called eye ellipse. So, what is this eye ellipse in that occupant packaging? This is actually a graphical representation of approximation of the occupant eye locations distribution as the multidimensional normal density distribution. In other word, we can mention this is the graphical representation two dimensional or three dimensional. If it is two dimensional, then ellipse and three dimensional, then the ellipsoidal shape within the three dimensional pose shape or two dimensional structure, all the driver's eyes will be located within this area. So, if the drivers are adjusting their seat as per their requirement, then locations of the eyes of those drivers starting from 5th percentile body dimension to 95th percentile body dimension will be accommodated within this ellipsoidal structure. Now, if you look at this image, then you can see this is the tangent to eye ellipse, which is dividing 5 percent of the population and 95 percent of the population. Now, if you look at this sentence, a line tangent to the obstructions such as pillars, mirror edges or hood lines and to the 95 percent cut off ellipse. So, line tangent to the obstruction to the 95th percentile cut off ellipse determines vision angle attainable by the at least 95 percent of the occupant. So, this I ellipse actually helping us to defining that if we draw a tangent line, how tangent line with this ellipsoidal structure and various obstructions. This tangent line actually defining that if this through this line of uh, vision angle, 95 percent of the driver population will be able to visualize that particular object or target. Now, apart from various key reference points, eye ellipse, there are various postural angles which are also defined in SA standards. These postural angles are also important for defining occupant packaging. So, these important postural angles are pedal plane angle, ankle angle, knee angle, hip angle and torso angle. So, first pedal plane angle. So, that is mentioned is denoted as A 47 in SE standard. So, this pedal plane angle is the angle with the depressed floor and the pedal plane mean accelerator plane. Similarly, this angle A 46 it is known as the ankle angle. This is the angle between the pedal plane or the bottom of the foot and the shank line or the midline of the lower leg. So, this is known as the ankle angle. The third angle is designated as A 44 in SA standards. This is called knee angle. So, this is the, the angle between the thigh line and the shank line or the lower limb line. Next angle is the A 42 that is the trunk angle, angle between the thigh line and the torso line. Then another important angle is the A 40 that is the torso angle. So, torso angle is the angle of the midline of the torso with the vertical axis or with the vertical line, how is the angle of the torso. So, that is defined as the A 40 I uh, mean torso angle. So, these are the various angles while we are talking about the posture of the driver in that inside the vehicle space while they are positioned on the driver seat, then we need to analyze these angles to understand whether the posture is comfortable or not. Now, few key other dimensions which are also important for occupant packaging. So, one such dimension is H 30 dimension. It is the vertical height of the SGRP from the accelerator heel point. This is the H 30 dimension. This is the accelerator heel point. So, vertical height of this particular point from the floor po position mean that is the accelerator heel point to the C SGRP sitting reference point. This vertical height of the sitting reference point is defined as the H 30. On the other hand, the horizontal distance along the x axis from the accelerator heel point to the SGRP sitting reference point that is the H point of the 90th percentile mannequin that is designated as L 53 that is the horizontal distance of the SGRP. Now, if H 30 dimension mean this vertical dimension is higher, it means the vertical space requirement for the vehicle will, all, will be also high. At the same time, 
if h 30 is higher then automatically the L 53 will be low mean the horizontal space requirement will be less, but the vertical space requirement will be high. On the other hand if h 30 is low then vertical space requirement will be low, but in that case horizontal space requirement will be more mean along the x axis the space requirement will be more to accommodate the drivers. Now, H 30 for class A vehicles like passenger cars and light trucks it is generally 127 to 405 millimeter. On the other hand for class B vehicles like medium and heavy trucks, so it is generally more than 350 millimeter from the accelerator hill point. Other two important uh, dimensions related to occupant packaging are entrance height designated as H11 and belt height H25. The entrance height if you look at this image, the entrance height is the vertical distance from the sitting reference point HGRP level to the trimmed body opening. So, starting from HGRP to the trimmed upper body opening of the door panel. So, this vertical height is known as entrance height and this height is very important uh, as it is used for evaluate uh, head clearance during entry and exit. On the other hand belt height is the vertical distance between the driver's sitting reference point and the bottom line of the daylight opening at this side window. So, this vertical distance from the sitting reference point to the bottom line of the side window which is known as bottom of the side window daylight opening this vertical distance is called H 25 or belt height. This dimension is important to evaluate the driver's external visibility through side window. Now we are going to discuss few uh, clearance dimensions which are used for automotive packaging. So, first one is a effective headroom denoted as H61. This effective headroom is measured at 8 degree angle with the vertical line. From sitting reference point at 8 degree angle if we measure the distance from this sitting reference point up to the headliner this vertical distance is called as effective headroom. This effective headroom is very much important while we are thinking about the head clearance. Another dimension is knee clearance that is designated as L62. So, L62 is this distance from the knee pivot point to the dashboard and this is measured in uh, x z plane and as there is some uh, so after measuring this distance we deduct minus 51 millimeter uh, for the purpose to compensate the distance from knee pivot point to the surface of the knee. So, first we measure the distance from the knee pivot point to the dashboard then we deduct minus 51 to compensate this distance from knee pivot point to knee surface. Next leg room, leg room is measured as the distance from the sitting reference point to the ankle pivot point plus the distance from the ankle pivot point to the ball of foot. So, for this purpose 254 millimeter is added with this distance. The distance is from sitting reference point to ankle pivot point plus 254 millimeter. So, this is leg room. Next one is the thigh clearance. Thigh clearance is measured as the distance from the thigh midline to the steering wheel bottom portion. So, this vertical distance is thigh clearance and it is also very useful dimension to it needed to be checked so that it has to be ensured that the driver's thigh does not touch with the steering wheel. Now, some others dimensions related to width. So, first one is the shoulder room it is designated as W 3. So, this shoulder room is measured in the measuring zone that measuring zone is starting from the 254 millimeter above the sitting reference point to bed line. So, in this measurement zone how much is the horizontal or lateral space available the minimum car width within this region that is measured as the W 3 or shoulder room. Next is the elbow room, elbow room is measured from the 30 millimeter upward the elbow rest. So, this is the elbow rest portion from that elbow rest if we measure the 30 millimeter above 
how much is the cross cut with minimum cross cut width that is measured as W31 or elbow room. So, how much space is available for the accommodation of the drivers and co passengers elbow. Next is the hip room, hip room is measured from the in the measurement zone it is this is also the cross car width or lateral space inside the car between these two door panel. So, this distance is measured from 25 millimeter below of the SGRP to 76 millimeter above of the SGRP within this region how much lateral space is available that is measured as the hip width. Now, reachability while the drivers is uh, seated on the driver seat then whether they can operate various controls or they can reach the various controls for that purpose reachability is studied. So, here is this is the car for the minimum reach envelope where the drivers can comfortably reach where we should position the uh, gear box for gear operation and this is the extended arm reach where maximum reach envelope this is mentioned as the maximum reach envelope. So, this type of reach envelopes are also studied to for positioning various controls and displays. So, the drivers can easily operate those controls and display with comfortable reach or extended arm reach. Now, if we look at this image, so this is the actually top view. So, this is the SCT SGRP position and this is the maximum reach for the outbound hand while driver is on the driver seat and this is the maximum reach for the inboard hand. So, this is actually this image for US uh, vehicle, but in Indian scenario it will be opposite. So, this side will be the inboard hand and this side will be the outboard hand. So, this is the representation that how much area can be horizontally accessed with the maximum reach for the inboard hand and this is the for the outboard hand. Now, apart from the hand reach we also need to consider about the leg reach. So, while 95th percentile or 5th percentile driver is seated on the driver seat. This is their location position of the H point, uh, hip joint point, and while they are keeping the leg on the accelerator. So, if we look at this area, this is the hill line. So, this is the position of the hill, this two. Now, this is the center line, 0 degree, and this plus 10 degree and minus 10 degree, this is the overlapping area for both the leg. So, for this leg, this leg comfortably can be moved from this minus uh, 30 degree to plus 10 degree for this uh, right leg. Similarly, for the left leg plus 30 degree to minus 10 degree. So, this overlapping area is the plus minus 10 degree. Now, while the driver is keeping their clutch, so clutch should be positioned within for the right leg, this is within 20 degree from the center line whereas, the brake will be positioned at this area and clutch at this position. Between this clutch and brake minimum clearance should be 2 inch and here is also mentioned how should be the dimension of the brake. So, it should be 3.5 to 6 inch into 1 to 3 inch. For accelerator it should be width should be 3.5 inch and its height will be 9 inch. So, in this image also it is shown that comfortable hand grip reach and also the maximum hand grip reach. So, positioning of the various foot controls are also important. So, and it should be positioned within this guideline so that drivers can easily operate those controls with their either left or right leg, brake and accelerator with the right leg whereas, the clutch with the left leg. If we look at this image, so various dimensions are mentioned and these are the hip joint points these are the H point uh, location for various uh, drivers and these are the relative positions of accelerator, brake and clutch and also their dimensions are mentioned. Now, occupant packaging process. So, there was traditional approach where during development of new vehicle manufacturers used to adopt a procedure which could be simply described as design outside in. In this method, the exterior styling are being considered first followed by the fitting the engineering within the specified volume. So, they started with the outside. So, outside styling was done first and then within that outside uh, structure inside components are fitted, but the current 
approach is that opposite, it is inside out. So, an alternative approach followed nowadays that is the inside out, this approach would promote a clearer focus on the occupant tissues inside the vehicle first and then the exterior design to accommodate people and all other vehicle components inside. So, in this occupant development process, so after defining the vehicle type, market segment and design product characteristics by the advanced vehicle team, the package engineering members of the team begin to create the vehicle layout in a CAD system. The engineers or ergonomists dealing with occupant packaging start their work by positioning the mannequin of the occupants, those are drivers, passengers inside the 3D CAD model of the vehicle space and conduct various ergonomic analysis to organize all the vehicle components around the uh, those occupants to ensure effective, safe and comfortable performance of various tasks. This task may be driving or non-driving related. Now, if we look at the schematic diagram, then we can see how is the design process for vehicle concept development. So, there is various aspects, one is technical specification, geometric dimensions, another is the engineering targets. So, technical specification is actually achieved through quality function deployment using customer wants obtained through the market research. Then external and internal packaging and ergonomic aspects are also studied for defining the geometric dimensions. Then vehicle performance, aerodynamics, crash, uh, safety, vehicle dynamics, fuel efficiency. So, all these engineering aspects are also considered for achieving the engineering targets. Based on these three issues, ultimately vehicle concepts is developed and in that vehicle concept, styling is also considered based on the user survey, design, creativity. So, first defining all these aspects, then we are thinking about the styling portion to make the vehicle visually attractive and more pleasing. So, in this way, vehicle concepts are developed. In that vehicle concept development, so this middle phase is the related to occupant packaging. Now, how this occupant packaging is done? So, as reported by Parkinson and Reed in 2006, so this is also one schematic diagram to represent the occupant packaging process. So, first we need to define the population, their gender, mean who are the targeted audience, their socioeconomic condition, seating height, their anthropometric and biomechanical characteristics. After that, experimental population, boundary mannequin, boundary mannequin with randomness. So, these are the experimental procedure. Then we go for posture model, performance of the component location as function of the body size, effects of restraint due to component location. So, various posture related issues are discussed. Then we go for population objective function. Combination of such factors such as accommodation, comfort, safety, all these aspects are considered. Then all these things are actually leading to optimization. This optimization is also guided by design variables vehicle dimensions, adjustment range, components location, then various vehicle constraint. So, these in this is actually affecting in both direction. So, these factors affecting the optimization and also optimization is related to these issues. So, vehicle constraints factors such as overall height, hood styling, maximum permissible interior height. So, these issues also affecting the also determining how will be the posture of the occupants inside the vehicle. Then vehicle parameters like fixed dimension based on for example, carryover components of body structure, those are also affecting the posture. So, if we go step by step in this way, then we will be able to achieve a good occupant packaging. Now, Vise 2016 in his book Automotive Design Process, he has given detailed step by step process for occupant packaging. Although these steps are not uh, one after another, these are actually happening, many of these steps are happening concurrently or simultaneously. So, the first it is starting with the vehicle assumption, market segment, driver population, body size, power train feature. So, this is the first task and gradually one after another task is performed to ultimately get the full vehicle design. So, as I mentioned, so if we go for the task 2 that is the exterior design, then task 3 that is sitting position based on the various uh, reference point, various dimensions, then task force, steering wheel location, 
uh, diameter rim various steering wheel aspect then uh, task 5 then task 6 seat design task 7 reach, reach evaluation visibility evaluation various ergonomic evaluation in this way one after another task are performed to get the proper occupant packaging and then we study entry exit instrument panel if we look at this uh, schematic diagram then we will understand that always this is not a one way direction so sometimes it is both way so one step is actually one task is actually related to other so one task influencing another task so we have to perform this task simultaneously to achieve the uh, goal of best occupant packaging so that driver passengers maintenance operator can perform their task comfortably and easily now from this module 3 what are the key learnings so first basic understanding on importance of occupant packaging next we also discussed various standard related to occupant packaging and ergonomic evaluation those are SE standards British standards ISO standards then coordinate system for defining dimension and spaces in automotive product we also discussed about key reference points and dimensions relevant to occupant packaging and lastly the process of occupant packaging with schematic diagrams now these are the various uh, references which have actually been used for this module 3 preparation apart from those references i also suggest the students to go through these uh, various online resources to get more information and updates. Thank you.